Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 Kai's Reduct as the US of A, at least still for now. Uh, last time, what can I say? Things are not looking too good. Uh, the uh, relief bill failed to pass. And radicals are spreading all throughout the country. We're going to need a change soon. Broadcasting from New York City, Doug MacArthur gave your radio address for this 4th of July, but denounced the violence between the radicals and promised the American people that the military was more than prepared to restore order. Well, this is all in good. There's the issue that MacArthur did not even alert the president that he would be speaking to the nation. Charles Curtis is infuriated by those in her cabinet, clearly admire that MacArthur, the, the MacArthur clique and his ability to reassure many establishment figures that he can restore order to the nation. Nonetheless, this cannot be a good sign for democracy, but while MacArthur has too many followers in our military to fire, we could reprimand him for whatever that's worth. Just let it be. Margaret Mitchell published her, her novel today, Gone with the Wind, which immediately became a bestseller and may be nominated for the next Pulitzer Prize. Even Hollywood is taking notice and is planning fi a film adaptation for release next year. Set in the Old South during the American Civil War, many see his analogy for strained political situation in the U.S. Many Southern conservatives claim the novel supports her clause. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Well, no well, shit. Minnesota, which has become the bastion of the progressive Senator Floyd Olson, has continued to flip away from traditional parties, mainly the Republicans. Many people are turning away from very re Republicans on the direction of the progressives, AFP, and even the SBA. Various unions have held rallies from these parties, and attendance far outstrips our ability to outshout them. Something in the water? America had a brief period of calm today with a mostly peaceful De Independence Day celebration, commemorating the signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1776 by the Second Continental Congress on the eve of the American Revolutionary War. The holiday is one of great importance to the American people. While many were worried that the rising tensions in America would see resulting in another bout of violence in the long and brutal election season, most sighed a breath of relief today, as the news reported, a little brawling during the annual celebration. All the major candidates made sure to be seen and photographed among large crowds and delivered speeches connecting their respective causes to the situation of 1776. Most Americans took time and st took some time to take a break from the intense politics plaguing America. Instead, they decided to just spend time with their families and friends amidst picnics and fireworks. It would seem for a brief moment that America had finally received something that it had lacked for a very long time. Unity. A brief respite from the chaos. It's been more than two months since the League of Eight provinces ceased to exist and war broke out on the shores of the Yangtze River. Gas raining in eastern China, reliable news has been harder to obtain than ever before. Despite censorship implemented by various warlords in the Qing government, young journalists have made his way with cleverness and courage throughout the war-torn land to the former League of the South, the mountains of Fujian Air Base of the KMT. Edgar Snow, who came to Shanghai in 28 from the U.S., works for an English newspaper in the city. His bravery across the front lines and open sympathy to the cause of the KMT has opened his way to interview the leadership of the uprising. Today's hastily printed book, Right White Sun Over China, hit the stories and found great interest with Western readership. Besides the talks with his interview partners, his, he paints a vivid picture of life in the KMT-controlled parts of China, different from warlord rule, but not without strife. His stories, while clearly picking a side, still invoke sympathy from the KMT struggle all over the world, especially in leftist circles. Quite an adventure. I've been meaning to play the KMT, because they do have the new focus tree. Uh, or the They had the rework in Kaiser Reich, so I might be trying playing that out soon. Maybe on stream. You might be seeing that before this, honestly. I'm not sure yet. Is that? Ah, friend of the channel, Mr. Manorheim. Beautiful. Um. Okay, we have the option to consolidate Manorheim's rule. That's interesting. Uh, it doesn't seem too different from the base game finish tree, though. 
Which I guess it doesn't need to be that much different, but... Yeah. Anyway. The South has long been considered the heartland of the traditional Democratic elites. This may not be the case for much longer as polls show a massive spike in votes for the old Democrats and support for their nominee. Underrated broadcast, William H. Murray spoke at length about its plans for America and ending the threats to the white American way of life. It seems the old Democrat support is growing stronger by the day, and they have pledged to run campaigns against mainstream Democrats who continue working with the Republican Party. What devious madmen. Situation in Arkansas is deteriorating as a state government cannot contain the increased fighting between the AFP Minutemen and the old Democratic aligned white leagues, especially the Klan. Long's racially populist, or radically populist economic agenda and alliance with groups such as Jews and Catholics has incurred the hate of both the more reactionary landed families in the region as well as supremacist groups, despite his attempts to largely dodge, or when not possible, regularly flipping on, the question of furthering civil rights for black Americans. As his ambitions put him in odds with the old Democratic Party, and he seems more willing than they to make alliances with progressives, competitive competition between the AFP and ODP have broken down into outright warfare between the two, with men and men ha having recently attempted to assassinate local white league leader Arthur Homer Martin Adkins, but only succeeding in wounding him. Long ally Hattie w Wyatt Carraway is calling for support against McLean's terror attacks, claiming they were the main cause of fighting, whereas much of the established class on the eastern side of Arkansas, including Congressman Ezekiel C. Gathings, desires a crackdown on the AFP. Traditional Democrat and former ally Woodrow Wilson, Joseph Robinson, recommends a crackdown on both, however. Can we crack down on both? Uh, I have a feeling we we'll crack down on both. Yeah, I don't think we can afford it. Let's counter the clan first. We're doing a very good job of butchering the clan, Jesus. Or the old Democratic Party, rather. Well, it's basically the clan. Let's be real. It is the clan. MacArthur spoke in President Hoover privately about a contingent plan called War Plan White, a military plan for dealing with the pro's armed uprising of United States U.S. citizens. The plan would call on MacArthur to take emergency action to protect the country and re erect old barricades in D.C. This can be engaged even from outside D.C. at the Washington Arsenal. While the plans have obviously not been made public, we at least have it as a contingency that the radicals enact one of the revolution from within the government. MacArthur went on a request permission to hold New Mexico, which was seen active from both the Klan and Minutemen. But some of his cabinet are nervous about empowering MacArthur further, and he's abusing his authority. We'll... We'll grant support. Why not? A recent book from famous American author F. Scott Fitzgerald hit shelves today. Fitzgerald's published a new piece after returning from vacation in West Africa that he embarked on in 35. The middling piece of literature talks about a small yet vicious bush war between the German government of Kenya and the Mau Mau. It goes on about Mau Mau's tactics and rebellions. Their leader, Onyago Obama, and Obama's personal involvement in the rebellion, which critics state are quite dubious. Overall, this book isn't a big seller and just adds to the bad reputation Obama seems to have earned in the colonies. What does he think he is, a white savior? An Obama in America. Obama in America, I don't get it. Who knows? Finish. End of a Hetman 8. Ah, shit. Short Michigan, the automotive capital of the world, Walter Ruther and Richard Frankenstein, the leaders of the UAW Association, called a general strike against Ford Motor Company and proclaimed themselves for unionism, not Fordism, demanding higher pay and fewer work, a few hours for automotive workers. At 2 p.m. today, a photographer for the Detroit Free Press asked to take a photo of the leaders of the UAW standing in the overpass with a Ford sign in the background. 
While they were posing, a group of 40 men from, the for from Ford's service department approached them from behind and began to beat them with their batons. The group then continued their attack on some of the beret-wearing women present to pass out leaflets. This will hurt us more than it does the Unionists. Henry Ford. Not a good guy if you look in. Not the best guy. I suppose. People from Vancouver and L.A., from Vancouver and L.A. to New York and D.C., let out a sigh of relief as a great heat wave of 36 has come to an end. And now a cold front has spread over North America, becoming known as the United States' deadliest nat natural disaster of the 20th century with an estimated death toll reaching 5,000. But even as the heat wave ends, a new chapter in American history is about to begin. Well, at least it's over. This chapter, at least the other one, is not going to be over. Anytime soon, even remotely, let's be real. In a number of major cities, conflicts between supporters of the American First Party, Old Democrats, and Socialist Party have broken out into violence. Partisan fistfights and even shootouts are starting to become a regular occurrence throughout the country as the country spirals even deeper into chaos. While public eruptions are easy to counter, the enclaves these radicals have cut out of city blocks, run on graft, are harder to stop. This is just not our year. That should be our catchphrase at this point. That should be the new American uh, motto. Never mind E Pluribus Unum. This is not our year. Campaign between Hugh Long's AFP and the SBA and the ODP have grown so volatile that none apparently dare to campaign the strongholds of the others. AFP men and men have begun actively patrolling the borders of hostile states with the collaboration of governors in order to sway them from attacking, with the ODP and SBA returning with favor. This is virtually the end of a new party militias operating from the shadows, with them no longer being afraid to behave as a military force, would, and some of our own officers aiding them in their training, organization, and patrolling, making them a into a more cohesive force. Or maybe coming. On a chilly evening in New York, President Herbert Hoover has thrown out the ceremonial first pitch of the World Series in an all-New York Subway Series matchup between the National League champion Giants and the American League champion Yankees. While the series looks to be a competitive one, the Yankees are still highly favored to win, as the Yankees' old core of Lou Gehrig and Tony Lazari has been supplemented by rookie sensation Joe DiMaggio and pitching legend Lefty Gomez. The Giants are no pushover, however, having stars in the the home run king, Mel Ott, and ace pitcher, Carl Hubel. Due to the deteriorating political and economic situation, Americans have turned to baseball as one of the few things that can still bring people of all creeds together as one. At least for a few hours, Americans can feel normal. Once more. Play ball! Belgium's joined the Reich Pact. I only got this part back. Look at that. Good for Belgium. All right. In a shocking upset, the New York Giants have defeated the Yankees four games to three during their fifth championship. While the Yankees have put up a good fight, they simply cannot handle the power of Malott, who hit two home runs in the size of game seven at the Polo Grounds. President Hoover himself saluted Ott for his stellar performance, whose longtime accomplishments have transformed the Giants into one of the best teams of the decade. However, now that the World Series is over, many Americans are beginning to increase, become increasingly divided as the election draws nearer and campaign grows fiercer. Congratulations, Giants. Oh, Poland, you, uh, you're not in good shape right now. I don't know why you guys bothered. Um, hey, Green has their own tree, like their own rework tree. Look at that. I literally just got done finishing. A Ukraine series. So, uh, for the Kaiser Agri work, I don't know if I'm ready to go back for a Kaiser Redux series, but. Yeah. Many reps 
uh, Republicans and Democratic reps have announced that this year will be their at last year in Congress. While many retirees claim old age motivated them, rumors of gaining intimidation by the SBA, old Democrats, and the FP congressmen reminds many of the congressional brawls between Charles Sumner and Preston Brooks. The unprecedented rate of their retirements has given hope to the FP, old Democrats, and SBA that they can win these open elections. Let's hope they get good replacements. Hmm. Let's do... Let's... And let's get working on... Oh, I want my construction now. Speaking of construction... Yeah, no. Terry's exiled in Canada. Elected in Canada, not exiled. I'm sure the king will be happy then. Stop the Kamal. All right. Well, here we are. The results are finally in from what has probably been the most ideologically contested presidential election the United States has ever witnessed. None of the three major parties have secured enough votes in the Electoral College to outright win the presidency, and as a result, the House of Reps once again has to vote on the winner of the election. While many are expecting the so-called mainstream parties to back one each other, the old Democrats are attempting to court conservatives while the SBA demands progressives back them or be held responsible for a reactionary victory. Meanwhile, Long is seemingly attempting to cut deal with every representative in arm's reach, especially the progressive party, left wing of the GOP, and more populist Democrats. This is probably not the end of our problems, but for the time being, the victory goes to... I gotta pick one of the radicals. Um... We'll go with old friend of the channel, Huey Long. News is out today. News out today. News out of Texas today has caused outrage among its populace. Specifically, the, the news states that the state's appointed electors had to fire the will of the people and cast their votes on John Nance Garner instead of Huey Long, who had won the state's popular vote. While well, they are technically within the rights to do to go against the will of the populace, many have attempted to sue them. The case looks like it's going to the Supreme Court. I will say... No, the electors back down. Why not? Members of the SPA have refused to accept the results of our free and fair elections, claiming the House of Reps system has subverted the will of the majority. Bill Haywood has said as much and called the whole of Congress reactionary for this injustice. Independent newspapers from inside the SPA have reported that the AFL are beginning to show cracks in their solidarity with Haywood. Damn you, Haywood. Damn it all to hell. Hoover has been vocal after the election, openly criticized Long and the America First as being a dangerous choice for country. Hoover has encouraged both the Republicans and Democrats to form an alliance to keep Long in check. Well, no one cares about Hoover anymore. Do I have an option now to do stuff as Long? I do not yet, no. Good to know. Let's keep going.
gotta wait till January to do anything to really get this thing kicked off. Day strike. Ah, oh, great. In protest for the election results, the SBA has launched a strike on New Year's Day, which has crippled the industries of the North. Councils of trade unions and councils of professional workers have been set up to run the cities of Steel Belt during the strike. Paris newspapers have de demonized this to be similar to a general strike that set off the British Revolution. Well, this is going to start a problem. John Weirtroy has resigned from his position of governor of the territory of Alaska, and his place, Ernest Gruening, has been appointed as a lifelong Democrat and advocate for Alaskan statehood. He was appointed of a job by the president despite political differences. Many think that Gruening was appointed of a job due to his work in the island territories, while others think this political move, this political move have, has more sinister undertones. But in all, there is little talk, as it seems like all of America has forgotten about Alaska, something Gruening seems seeks to fix. I wonder what he has for in store. Crooning hmm. today has made a speech in passionate favor of Alaskan statehood. The speech is compared to the people of Alaska to the people of America under British rule. Call for Alaska to be truly free and equal to the rest of America. His speech, though, has mostly fallen on deaf ears, as most of America has bigger concerns to deal with. Sorry, Alaska. We have bigger things to deal with. The country's social problems have forced the American people to turn to radical solutions. The two-party system has been broken down, and Huey Pierce Long is to be sworn as the 31st President of the United States, with William Lemke being sworn in as VP, with support of progressives giving him just enough support to take Congress. As during speech in Washington, D.C., Long has pledged to defend the interest of the people and to put the interests of regular Americans above anyone else. How the FP's slim coalition in Congress means that it may find it challenging to pass meaningful legislation, especially in the Senate, where an assortment of old Democratic, Republican, Democratic, and SBA senators promised to filibuster any lobby sees detrimental America. God bless America. God bless. The impossible has occurred, and America first have gained the presidency. The FP does not, however, have control over Congress or House of Reps, and Huey Long faces both a weary legislator and country on the verge of utter chaos. Well, let's work on. Oop, I got an email. Fun. Work on fighting the anarchists. Long's dreams of sharing the wealth cannot be achieved so long as the SBA has a chokehold on the American labor. With the general strike ongoing since the beginning of the year, this must be brought down before America can live. One of Long's first acts is a broad relief to the farmers of America. Thus, this executive order directed the Secretary of Commerce. The order enforces price controls on farm products, provides credit to farmers, and provides tariff on grains and other cereals. This will reverse the price slump that is driving farmers into poverty. Unwilling to wait to overcome the Senate filibuster and citing the violence conflict that is going on in America, Long passed executive orders, bypassing Congress entirely. While farmers across the country rejoice, the mainstream parties in the country denounce executive order. It's a tyrannical act of the executive branch and a single attempt to grab the ODP support base. Approved. This prospect of lore war looms closer and closer. Alaska Territorial Governor Ernest Gruning has begun to take action to defend the territory of Alaska in the event of an all-out war in America. Alaska, while strategically valuable position, sits almost un completely undefended. The Army Brass in Washington, namely Malin Craig, 
regarding the territories too far distant to effectively defend in a time of war, while nothing more than armed locals and ragtag National Guard units defending the state from potential invasion, Marvin R. Marston submitted a plan to ruining, proposing the use of a local population to defend the state from incursions from either the nearby Kingdom of Japan or the Empire Kingdom of Canada or the Empire of Japan across the sea. Ruining himself has begun setting up the guard with Marvin Marston as the federal government gears up to defend the territory in the event of war. Ten General Simon Bolivar Simone Bolivar Buckner Jr. has been assigned to oversee and assist the ATG with defensive preparations. Let's hope this is unnecessary. He's got fucking Simone Bolivar on his side? What the hell? Well, the beer's been a protector of the U.S. until now. Today, they declared their independence to banish all American devices from their government. Word has it they have been they have aligned themselves with the German Empire and the Reich back, clearly believing the Germans will protect them from any American reprisal. I have a little choice but to let them be. Motherfucker. So I just love that... Well, they got a fucking Habsburg on their throne. Sure. Alright. Um, I might actually play Alaska another time. So I'll just... I'll skip that event. And we'll come back to it another time. Public declared in Serbia. Interesting. To fight the anarchists. I forgot we can also change Yuri Long's outfit. That is kind of funny. Um, let's. Address the Masters of Finance. Hmm. Huey Long intends to follow through on his promises to build a cross party alliance to allow for the dominance of the Sheriff's Wealth ideology in America and build enough congressional approval to pass the AFP's agenda. However, attempts to appoint everyone from moderate socialists to conservative Democrats to his cabinet has proved to be a problem as some are flatly refusing to join, with some leftists being especially upset at the idea of Herbert Hoover being appointed Secretary of Commerce and rightists disliking Smelly Butter being appointed Secretary of War. Of course, of course Charles Coughlin presses us to just double down the AFP appointees and only appoint other parties who will accept this. If you don't take his advice, it's obvious that we'll have to buy us one side of the aisle to get them to greed to another. Mm. We'll lean towards more conservative appointees, I guess. I don't want to strengthen the other factions too much. Publicly long has stated he hoped that the Morgan banking family, Rockefeller, and other financial elites could be talked into supporting share of wealth if they were brought to the table and told it was in the only defense the nation had, allowing them to be administrators if they accepted mass wealth redistribution. Unsurprisingly, however, one after another turned down his offer, Rockefeller calling him a fool. While some relatively small-time millionaires seem open to the plan, it's clear that the giants are not, causing or perhaps just allowing long to go on the offensive, decrying their lack of patriotism. How could they? Long's order the U.S. Department of Justice Antitrust Division to investigate all the powers that decline to share our wealth and assign an executive order expanding the definition of trust. This combination has led to outcries in Congress authoritarianism, while Long attempts to deal with this by calling congressmen to oppose him tools of big business. His popularity among the common people has fanatically increased as a result, but Washington obviously remains opposed, calling it unconstitutional and wild overreach of his powers. More radical of his opponents, promised to use their paramilitaries to defend Long themselves from Long, as it should. I'm following my own research, that's okay, I'm not gonna be... Oh, that's the other Austria, never mind. Long has declared that all attempts to 
talk or frighten the financial elite to be a failure, it's issued an executive order that will permit a one-time confiscation of wealth above $50 million, declaring that the amount of capital these self-serving businessmen is wildly irresponsible, a threat to republic, and makes it impossible to pass any legislation through Congress. Naturally, Congress is in uproar and announced the action as the latest in a series of self-serving AFP acts, the unaffiliated populace appears to be with Long. It is unknown how much this will help as segments of the military are apparently coordinating with members of Congress to take action against Congress. It was the only way. Let's also focus on the ODP. The ODP, the NDWL, have caused America and us enough problems using their white league and clan links. We need them fast and hard before they can react. Oh. Long support in D.C. has finally bottomed out. Douglas Martha marched into D.C. today to restore order, having declared Long to be tyrant and attempted to arrest him in the White House. MacArthur's marches reminded many of, in D.C. of Cox's Army 32, except these men are motivated to preserve a status quo and were cheered instead of booed. Having been tipped off by FBI informants and MacArthur's command staff, Long was able to stay ahead of a traitor's general and escaped to New Orleans. MacArthur has chosen to have the White House coordinated an investigation along from the executive chair. Civil war is imminent. My light agents was, was to the public, MacArthur. To democracy. There's Dougie. Um. How are you long? Clearing thing, we'll stand by the Republic. Stand by this rep uh, Republic for now. Stand by the Republic. Here we are. The governors of the Pacific states have declared them MacArthur, William H. Murray, Huey Long, and Bill Haywood are all traitors, tyrants, and enemies of America. They currently not secede from the Union, but instead refuse to recognize the authority of any of the competing governments. Governor Frank Merriam announced that at, Sacramen at the Sacramento legislature that, if push came to shove, they would see proper democracy restored to the country by force. Now we will stand by the Republic. And here we are, the Pacific States of America. Um, I'll probably reorganize all this next time. So, or in the next video. So I will be out for now. But thanks always for watching. Gang, like, like, dislike, you didn't. You all know the drill by now. Um, I'll see y'all next time. Have a good one and bye bye.